you. So, hi everybody. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. How's everything going so far? All good. Thank you for having me here. I will be giving a quick overview about why and how to contribute to Calypso. This presentation is not strictly for programmers, so there will not be a single line of code here. And it will touch on the many different ways uh, where we can contribute to Calypso, so not just in programming. And my name is Habis Rahman. I am a happiness engineer for Automatic. I am from Indonesia. I live in a small town called Malang, which is pretty close from Singapore. It's about two hours of flight from here. So uh, what is Calypso? How many of you are already familiar with Calypso? I hope everyone is. OK. So. I am definitely not going to talk about Calypso, music, and dance. So if you are here for that, then this presentation is not going to be much of help for you. Instead, I'm going to be talking about this one. So here's Calypso. Please ignore the fact that I only have like two visits in September. My site is not exactly a very busy site. So Calypso is the new admin area for WordPress.com. It works uh, for WordPress.com sites and also for self-hosted WordPress if you, use, if you connect your site with Chatpack. And here's how the editor looks like. It's pretty different from the w WP admin editor. So what's new in Calypso is like it has several new features. It's fast because it's like a single page application. If you change something, it doesn't reload everything. It's responsive. It works in desktop, table, tab, tablet, and mobile. And it's, uh, it's multi-site. It works for multi-site uh, from the beginning. So if you have multiple sites, it's easy to switch from one site to another to work on posts and everything. This new editor, there's the reader feature when you can follow and get updates from sites. So it's kind of like a RSS feed reader. And it's 100% open source. If you would like to um, read about the announcement about Calypso, it's not exactly that new. It's released one, about one year ago. You can read more at this URL. Calypso is also available as OSX, Windows, and Linux apps. There's also the web version, which can be accessed on WordPress.com. If you'd like to try out the apps, you can go to apps.wordpress.com and download stuff from there. And the technology behind it is it's a 100% uh, JavaScript app. It uses Node.js. It uses React for the user interface library. And it just uses Redux for the state container library for it. Next, we move to why would you want to contribute to Calypso? This is what Matt said during the State of the World at WordCamp USA 2015. He said that he believed that JavaScript and API-driven interfaces are the future of not just WordPress, but for all the web. So by, I think, uh, for me personally, I think Calypso is one interpretation of how we can use JavaScript and API-driven interface to uh, build something new for WordPress. And if you, and by contributing to it, we can get to learn about one way how to get that done. Another reason is that Calypso is an app that's used every day by a lot of users. On, on WordPress.com, we have, we, there are like 22.8 billion page views every month, 43, no, 65.3 million of new posts are created every month. So um, before I joined Automatic, I was a freelance web developer, mostly working with small clients. So the, the difference between uh, Calypso and what I worked on before is totally, the scale is totally different. There are more users, there are different expectations, different limitations. There are things you can do with a small number of visitors that might not work on a bigger scale. And aside from just uh, learning programming or JavaScript from Calypso, you can, also, you can actually learn and 
take a look about the many different aspects of running a, an app as a company. You can learn about design decisions, the business aspects of Glypso. You can take a look at how A-B testing is done. You can take a look at uh, software testing is done. You can also see the new features being developed. Here is one example of a dis uh, design discussion inside Calypso. The story here is uh, that WordPress.com WordPress offers several levels of plans. There are free plans, uh, personal plans, premium plans, and so on. And plans comes with a lot of features. I work a lot with users, and it's pretty actually pretty common to, to, to see that users do not actually know what features come with the plan that they have. So they don't know that if they have premium plan, they don't know that they can like purchase their own custom domain names and everything. So here the design discussion is about creating a specific plans page to showcase all the features that's available in inside the plan in the hope that users can make use of all of those features. Here is another ex is an example of discussion about um, more about the business aspect of Calypso. Here uh, we are talking about how to get people to upgrade. So on WordPress.com, people can buy a custom domain name and then use it on their site. So they have their own address, something something.com, not something.wordpress.com. And this this particular discussion is about getting these people to upgrade to one of the available plans. If we are looking at it, the code solution for this particular issue is probably pretty simple to create, but the interesting part is the actual discussion behind it. Here's an example about um, the AB, one of the many A-B tests being done in Calypso. This is an A-B test for uh, the sign up, sign up steps. So. Normally, when you are signing up to WordPress, you get first to enter your username, your emails, and then the address you want to use and everything. This particular test is to add a preview. So after you enter um, your site name, you get to pick a, a theme, and then uh, this test will show you the preview of that theme. If we're just uh, thinking about it logically, it, it seems like a pretty useful feature for people, but it turns out according to the test, it, it causes a drop in sign-up completion because, because um, this feature just adds one more thing for the users to do. And so um, it turns out adding that feature is not a good thing, and the test is stopped. That's one example of the things that you can learn from Calypso. So, coming to how to contribute to Calypso. The main repository for Calypso is available in GitHub. Here's a link. Speaking very broadly, there are two different avenues where we can learn and contribute to Calypso. First is in the form of GitHub issues. So if you are testing Calypso and then you see some bug reports or you, you have some questions and you have ideas or suggestions for it, then you can create a GitHub issue. And the second way is to actually, if, if you are about to uh, add an actual code contribution, you can create pull request. The way it works in Calypso is that if you want to work on something or to fix an issue, you create a new branch locally and then you work on your changes there and then when you're done, you make a pull request out of it and then it will then be reviewed and if it's deemed to be a good change, then it will be merged to the actual site. If you're actually at this stage where you are able to make the code changes, you probably, you probably don't, don't need me to show you how to create those pull requests and everything, so I'm gonna just skip this part. So one way to, to get started with Clipso is that you can run it locally. These are the whole steps that's, that's needed. 
You don't need to memorize all this. It's available on the GitHub page on the README. If those, steps con if those steps contain too many confusing directions for you, there's an alternative. There's a site called clipso.lib, which is a site that runs the current, uh, the current most updated version of Calypso, which in itself is not very interesting. But there are several things you can do with it. You can check the documentation directly by going to that link. You can also test a branch directly by using the uh, link closer with question mark branch equals the branch name. So if you want to test somebody's pull request, you can just write the, the branch name there, and then it will load that, and you can test it that way. And it's especially useful if you want to test on mobile. Because if you, you have things running locally on your com computer, it's probably pretty complicated to have it running on your mobile devices. So you can use Calypso.lib instead. So in Calypso, both issues and pull request follow a simple title and labeling system to make things just clearer and easier to understand. Prefixes um, mostly are used uh, to indicate uh, the feature or, or the section of the, of the site that's being worked on. And labels are used to in indicate various uh, status of it, like feature, priority, type, and status. Here's an example of how it looks. The first reader part means that it's the issue is about the reader feature and the two color text are the labels. It's a, it's a question, and it's also set as reader to categorize it. If, if you want to uh, uh, write your own bug report or your question or suggestions and you're not sure what labels to add, you can just skip all of that and somebody will add the right labeling for you, so you don't have to worry about all that. If you want to get started, here are some useful labels that I would recommend. First, there's a label that's called Good First Change. You can filter by label on GitHub. And here are some examples of Good First Change issues. There's a sample there, like uh, the, uh, the third one is the site preview link in my site's menu is potentially confusing. It's probably just going to involve like changing text on the UI, so it's, it doesn't require a lot of thinking or <laughs> programming. Or the fourth one is inviting person with long email address on narrow screens resizes field off screen. This is probably just going to need some kind of uh, responsive CSS fix. So it's, if you want to contribute, it's probably not going to be too difficult to do. Another labels I would recommend is the review needed. There are several labels. There are, there are pull requests that needs design review, things that needs internationalization review, and the yellow one is if a pull request needs a code review. Here's an example of the stuff that needs design reviews. These are the ones that needs code reviews. And the last thing I'd suggest to check is the label called OSS Citizen. If you are creating uh, issues or pull requests and you're not an automatic employee, then uh, your issues or pull requests are probably be going to be tagged with OSS Citizen. There are already several contributions by, by non-automatic employees that's already been merged and added to Calypso. There are over 180 contributions so far. So if you want to try doing the same thing, you can take a look at how it was done by others. Look at some examples from there. 
And if you're, if you're interested, you want to get started, you can check the development documents on that page. And there are things there like programming guidelines, design guidelines, or contributing guidelines, which can help you get started. And if you feel like contributing to Calypso in many different ways, it's what you're interested to do in the future, join us at Automatic. Um, you can visit that link. And thank you very much. Thank you. So anybody wants to ask anything about Calypso? Yeah, no? I have a question, although okay. it's not related to Calypso. I mean, I want to know what is in Happiness Engineer exactly. Happiness Engineer actually is a, uh, is a role for uh, Customer support, customer. We are a uh, user facing, user facing staff. We we do live chats and ticket support every day. And also, um, um, we do what I call um, a project review, or um, like we kind of get input from users and then we send them to the developers. There are things that needs to be fixed, things that needs to be improved. So we're kind of like in between the developers. User focus. Yes. That's not going to happen. It's 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 something that that lives on WordPress.com, but it's not it's not something that's going to uh, live on core. And sorry, what was the second question again? Oh yeah, yeah. sorry. So um, uh, for the current version, you, if if you have Jetpack, you can connect your site. To Calypso, and then you can use the interface on WordPress.com to access this, the site. So if you see, oh, sorry about that. So my my example site that, that I showed before, it's actually also a self-hosted site. It's not on WordPress.com, uh, but um, I think there there are currently there are a few limitations of, of, of what you can do on Calypso, like. For example, if you have uh, like uh, meta fields or various different plugins on your site, it's probably not going to show up yet on Calypso. So there are the available uh, management options are like the the general ones, like creating posts, creating pages. And so yeah, you can access it, but it's current at at this version. It's not as complete as you might expect from your WP admin interface. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Hey, you're pretty good. Hello. How does Calypso compare to uh, premium stuff on the like managed WP platform? Um, okay. How does Calypso compare to uh, manage WP? Um, uh, to be honest, I have not used manage WP, so I don't know how to compare. But um, do you have any uh, specific question about uh, if if there's a feature you want to ask, or in, whether it's available in Calypso or not, or Something else. <laughs> All right. Anything else? All right. Thank you, Abhis. Uh, we've almost uh, reached at the end of our camp, but we have one.